Right now you're stressed, you're anxious, you don't know what to expect in your interview and that makes you prone to making mistakes. Making even one of the mistakes that I'm going to talk to you about in this video can be detrimental and get you rejected from medical school. How do I know this? Well I made these very mistakes myself and I ended up paying the consequences. But when I stopped doing them, things changed a lot. I got accepted at the Imperial College London Medical School. These things that I'm about to tell you, I really wish that someone had just shoved it down my throat so I would have followed it sooner rather than later. Okay, maybe not that aggressively. Yo, is that? Yeah, it is. It's devifying his natural habitat, googling what the perfect medical school interview answer is. And that was his first mistake. Remember that most interview questions are designed to be open-ended and interviewers are looking for each candidate's own unique take on it with a personalised response that is based upon their own experiences. And if you don't do this, you risk sounding like every single medical school applicant that just Google what the best teamwork answer is, read the first page on Google search or the student room and then just regurgitated it in their interview. The best answers are those that are based upon your strengths, weaknesses, your goals and both your personal and professional experiences which make them much more memorable and stand out. But you can't really do that unless you've got evidence to back up what you're saying. Frankly speaking, interviewers are going to get bored hearing countless students answer the same questions again and again and again, and a lot of the answers will just blend into each other. If you say something like, Yo, cuz, man's a good team lead and team worker, innit? I mean, that's great. But so is everyone else apparently. Plus, why should they even believe you? You could just be chatting. Moreover, the answer is just too simple, even though the question asked may have been a simple one like, are you a good team leader? To which a simple response may have seemed appropriate. In fact, your entire interview could just be simple questions, but it's your job to elaborate on your answers. Now, you could improve this and say something like, when I volunteered at the St. John Ambulance, I was actually a really good team leader. You did something other medical students probably haven't done, but it's still far from a good answer. You need to be more specific and say something like, I shadowed a HCA performing CPR on a person in the St. John ambulance, which helped me understand how healthcare professionals should act in stressful situations. And when the HCA put me in charge of other volunteers during a practice CPR session on a dummy, I was able to organise my team effectively. Much better, right? But without all the nasaliness and stuck upness. I actually also graduated as a doctor. Try and spend around a minute and a half, I'd say, on each question like that, and don't overdo it too as well. Long answers are just going to bore the interviewers and then they're more likely to interrupt you, which is just going to ruin your flow. But in reality, it's really hard to do this. In a pressured environment like an interview, your brain just naturally wants to blurt out everything it knows about the subject, and it tends to come out in an unstructured manner. Refrain from letting that happen by controlling what you say, picking out the most relevant and key points, and then conveying them in a concise manner. And a great way to do this is to structure your answer especially when giving um, examples by using the star technique. Most of you guys should have heard of this by now, but for those of you guys that haven't, I will slap you later. Genuinely. STAR is a really common communication technique that's even used in the NHS and it stands for describing the situation you were involved in or the task that you were asked to complete, describing the action that you took, the process you followed and the steps that you completed, then saying what the result was. And remember, this is the most important part of the answer and you need to demonstrate that your actions were successful. Make sure that you mention what you accomplished, what the benefits were and what you learned from it. And then finally, reflect upon your experience. Alongside using STAR, another way to make sure that your answer isn't a complete word vomit is by pausing for a few seconds after a question is asked so that you can see what I did there so you can gather your thoughts um, you know before you answer a lot of candidates think that pausing for a few seconds actually indicates that you don't really know your answer so you should try and answer as quickly as possible to appear more confident in reality it's actually quite the opposite sometimes blurting out the answer right away can make it seem like a rehearsed answer even though it's not and that's why it's important to wait a few seconds it'll not only make you sound more natural confident and thoughtful but it'll also allow you to make sure that you've heard the question properly now let's say the question that you were asked was tell me about your leadership experience and you practice your leadership answer to perfection so you just want to let the interviewer know why you're such a sick team leader but that's not really what the interview asked for he actually asked you Tell me about a challenging leadership experience that you faced. So make sure that you actually answer the question asked and in your response, don't forget the overall picture. I often got carried away talking about all the wonderful things that I did in my work experience, which is great. But this is a medical school interview. I didn't make sure that I related everything I said back to medicine in some way. For example, by maybe talking about what I learned and how that will help me become a better doctor. Maybe I contributed something to society and that 
helped me develop some skills. Perhaps what I saw reinforced my decision to want to study medicine. Tying your answers together concisely and then linking them back into medicine will show your interviewers that you are a strong and ideal candidate for their medical school. But the cherry on top is to make sure that you look your best while giving your answers. And now that interviewers are most likely going to be online, you need to look your best on camera. Most candidates ignore this because they think no one cares, but the best candidates like you are smarter and know that subconsciously these biases do exist. Therefore, it is crucial that you follow these five essential tips to make sure you look flies.